Today, I'm going to tell you the story of how I managed to go from a 9 to 5 in finance all the way to making 120,000 a month as an agency owner. All of that taking advantage of what I call audience arbitrage. I'm going to tell you the three lessons that I learned along the way to where I am now today. Now, a little bit about me. I was born and raised in Switzerland. And at the age of 19, I moved all the way to Australia to study mathematics as I really wanted to work a traditional finance job. Fast forward 10 years, I've ran a number of different agencies from content agency to paid traffic that I managed to scale all the way to 120,000 a month and also run my own software called Agency Flow, which helps agency owners make more money. The first lesson I've learned is that pivot is really important. Growing up, all I ever wanted was to work in traditional finance. I always wanted to be a trader. Um, that's why I decided to study mathematics. I did a bachelor in mathematics and a master's of applied mathematics, which then actually led me to work as an algorithmic trader. So I started making a bunch of money and then instead of just buying fancy stuff, I kind of used that money to invest in a business. And this was the start of my entrepreneurship career. I was in Australia at the time. And so instead of just using the money that I had saved up on fancy stuff, like buying a new watch or anything like that, I always thought that, you know, entrepreneurship and businesses was going to be the way that actually led me to making money. So I started looking around and really found this super cool surf board company in Australia called Isometry that I thought could be a really great idea for me to invest in. So I could kind of like, you know, help them from a business standpoint that I could use from all the learnings I had working in finance. And so this is really what led me into everything business related. I then became obsessed with trying to find ways to acquire clients. This is back in 2014. So we tried a bunch of traditional marketing method, all with really minimal efforts. And so at the time, I really started looking in other kind of more advanced marketing methods. And this is what led me into really looking at everything related to influencer marketing. This is when I realized that influencer marketing was an incredible method to reach an existing audience. I kind of took this opportunity and really pursued influencer marketing, which actually led me to my first pivot to really decide to invest and build my own software, which was at the time an influencer marketplace. So this changed the entire trajectory of my career, going to actually wanting to work as a trader, wanting to be on Wall Street, all of that to become a full entrepreneur and starting my own business, which I then pursued for the next few years. I left finance to work full time on developing software, built a team of over 15 people. And as all of you guys know, building software is extremely expensive. So again, this is when we had to kind of find another way to start making money. And so at the time, this platform was just an influencer marketplace. So brands needed to come to try and find influencers to work with. But then the issue is a lot of those brands actually sucked from a marketing, from a social media marketing standpoint. So this is when we started offering content to those brands, which is my first creative agency. And we grew this to just making enough money to keep developing the software. And at the time I saw an even bigger opportunity in paid traffic. So I really took this and focused all of my efforts in trying to build a paid marketing agency, which I grew all the way to over 100,000 a month. So after doing that for a few years, I still had the influencer marketplace running on the background. But now that I was involved in the agency space, I could kind of understand all the different things that people were doing. And I really met some really influ influential people that helped me kind of see this new opportunity that I could do with the software. So again, I pivoted and I essentially pivoted from the influencer marketing platform to this platform called Agency Flow that helps agency owner kind of make more money. And so now this leads us to our next point, which is all about building strategic partnerships. Let me tell you, I've built all of those different businesses without ever sending a single cold email. I've used the power of strategic partnership or what I call audience arbitrage. It's essentially when you take an existing community of potential clients and work out a deal with the owner of that community to build a partnership where there's an exchange of value. And if you manage to do this properly, you'll be able to kind of funnel clients from that existing community all the way to your own services. Again, as I've mentioned, the first time I've used this strategy was way back when I had the surfboard um, company. We were essentially finding influencers, which is, you know, like now that sounds very, very like just normal. But back in 2015, 2014, that was really the new thing to start finding people with an audience, essentially sending them product, letting their audience know about, you know, the service that you have to offer. So that's what we started. Did, did all of that, you know, we were sending surfboards all the way to the US, finding influencers there to kind of tell them that that's the product we have to sell. And so this 
is what really showed everything to me that then influencer marketing and working with an existing audience was really the way I wanted to go. Because, you know, like I never really wanted to send, you know, one-to-one -one emails and I always really loved the idea of one-to-many marketing. And so it's funny how things start, but that was my first kind of introduction to st strategic partnership and just building partnership with existing communities. So the second time I really took advantage of this was when I was building my paid traffic agency. I knew I didn't want to go and start doing the one-to-one -one emails and do all of that, the, this manual labor. So what I did is at the time, my wife was building this company called Female Startup Club, which is a podcast that interviews female founded businesses in e-commerce. So essentially she already had an amazing pool of clients that already had really good businesses because you know they were all all had product market market fit we're all making at least you know 100 to 200k a month because she was only interviewing like fairly large businesses and also they were just cool businesses with good content all of that so then instead of me having to go and reach out to companies i essentially just be like with her why don't i build essentially the marketing arm to your business so she was taking all the podcast and at the end you know, after an hour and a half of speaking with someone, there's always like the banter that you have when you finish recording with, um, you know, the person you're interviewing. And so it was super simple for her to be like, oh, and, and by the way, as well, you can talk to, you know, X about paid marketing. And so that's how I was able to funnel tons of clients from essentially her community all the way to our services. And this was the strategy that allowed us to grow to 100K a month with essentially never sending a single cold email. And again, this proved to be so successful that when I decided to pivot from the influencer marketplace to the agency software, I, I was like, okay, cool. But well, this time again, I'm not gonna start from zero. So I started looking for the ideal partner that already had an existing pool of agency owners. And this is when, you know, I found Iman Gadzi, which you guys all know. And this was the, the most successful strategy that I've ever used. Essentially, instead of going from zero to having to, you know, hustle and hustle and hustle to find clients. We literally went to zero to, to thousands of users in the span of a few months. And so the way that we've done is essentially I was like, okay, cool, I've got the software, I've got everything. You have the audience, why don't we just partner up and essentially build it directly inside of his course. How do you, you know, get paid? How do you communicate with clients? All of that. And so this is really the true power of audience arbitrage because you take someone's audience you offer a perfect service for them and the combination of the two is a massive win-win. You know, like Iman now owns part of the business, so he makes money that way. I now have a massive pool of clients and for me, that was the initial wave of clients, which then we all know that uh, word of mouth, referrals, all of that come from the initial um, user base. So that for me has been the absolute best strategy, both from scaling a physical product to a service-based business all the way to, you know, a proper on online software. So when you take advantage of audience arbitrage, you'll never have to worry about where your client's gonna come next. And the last lesson I learned is the value of resilience. You know, when I had this first idea with the software to become this influencer marketplace, and that's way back in 2015, everyone, you know, told me like, oh, it's, it's gonna be too complicated. You shouldn't do that. It's gonna cost so much money, which it did cost so much money. But I still pursued, I still, you know, continue to try, try and find ways, as I said, again, you know, from, from going to just building the software to then building an agency on the, on the back of the software um, to make money, to then again, have everyone be like, oh my man, this, this, this doesn't work. Then I stopped, um, you know, like the, the software for the influencer marketing side of things. And then I just kept going. I essentially in 2018, we decided to pause that because we just weren't getting enough people using the software and I was making too much money on the agency side of things. So it just made no sense for us to continue with all the developers and stuff. But I still, in the back of my mind, I was like, hey, we built this amazing backend, like with all those functionalities, you know, paying system, communication, chat, all of this. I was like, why not just keep one developer? Even, even if everyone told me you should stop and, you know, take your losses and, and that's it. I just, I was just in the back of my mind, I was like, you know what, there is something here. So I just kept one developer to kind of keep working. So all through 2019 and all of that, I kind of essentially used my existing, the existing software to kind of turn it into something that would be useful for me as an agency. Because I, I was seeing already there as an agency owner, all of the different inefficiencies that I had by using all of the different software, you know, like this massive st 
stack of software that you need, you know, five to five to eight different software, I thought, hey, there could be something better here. So again, even though everyone told me not to pursue this and not to continue, I just knew in the back of my mind. And so I kept this one developer, kept, you know, building software, changing it, etc., all the way to it become a really good software for me as an agency owner. And now that I had built all of this, which was now actually a, a software that was really useful for me as an agency owner, I was like, okay, cool. I'm not gonna start from scratch and try and find other agency owner one-to-one. -one. This is when, you know, I partnered up with Iman and we actually started building this software that was even better than what I thought. Um, and then we had this amazing community that we could actually ask questions and even turn the software into something even, even better. And this is just to show that if I had just listened to all the people around me, even though I've been incredibly lucky in my entire life, people have supported me in many, many different ways, but that particular software, people were like, you know what? Software is too complicated. It didn't work. You've tried. Just, just you know, give up on that. And this is really funny because now looking back, even people that truly believe in me, they didn't believe in that idea, but yet I believed in it. And you know, now looking back, everyone's like, that's crazy. Like that you, you ever considered potentially stopping. So this is just to show that again, when you have something in your, in your mind, an idea that you really want to pursue, just keep going, keep finding ways and stuff. It might not be the, the main project you work on, but keep finding and keep finding a way to actually continue building your dream. So looking back, this really were the three things that mattered the most in my career. Don't be afraid to pivot. Building strategic partnership is the easiest way to get on-demand consistent clients. And finally, be resilient and keep pushing for the ideas that you believe in, even if everyone around you tells you to stop. Because all good things take time to build, as easy as that. You know, sometimes you might be looking on social media or, you know, around you and it feels like people have just started things and it just pops in two seconds. There's always tons and tons of hours and maybe years of work that go into anything that's ever been good. If I was able to do it, then I know you can do it too. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next one.